before that, and uh, our biggest answer to that prayer is, is Mrs. Vicki Wilkerson. So would you stand here so they can look at it? Uh, she's my fiance. We are scheduled to get married August the 22nd at Trinity Baptist Church in Williamson, South Carolina, at 10 p.m. in the afternoon. Our Are twice. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> to remember. We're going to try a song this morning.
22. Matthew chapter 22. I have been praying about what to do these next seven days. It's difficult to know what to expect with the uh, circumstances of COVID and these past several months. <clears throat> but like uh, like the pastor mentioned a moment ago, with the one asking him to uh, put his messages on YouTube, I have some relatives who have, uh, because I'm able to preach on Sundays, I was at home uh, there during during this quarantine. Uh, they've begun to follow my preaching, and so I'm trying to maintain that. Amen. It's the reason I heard recording this morning. And, uh, but in thinking about what uh, the Lord laid this little thought, it's familiar to us, I'm sure. But if you look at verse 32, uh, I am the God of Abraham, Jesus said. Speaking about what God told all of us in the Old Testament. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, <coughs> but of the living. God is the God of the living. So, preacher, why would that be a concern right now? Well, when we leave this life, that's already taken care of. Amen. If your faith is in Christ, absent from the body, present with the Lord, you've got nothing else to worry about. If your faith is not in Christ, Nothing more you can do right. about it. Yeah. Today is the day of salvation. Well, I want you to notice the setting for a moment. Verse 15 of Matthew 22. Uh, when the Pharisees, uh, then the Pharisees took counsel how they might entangle him, entangle Christ in his talk. <laughs> and so there's three groups the Herodians the Sadducees, and the Pharisees. And they come up with three questions, and we'll probably deal with some of this more through the week, but the second question is the one that I want to focus on. Uh, the Sadducees do not believe in the resurrection. It's made very clear in verse 23 of the chapter. Uh, they believe that everything that's good is in this life, and there's nothing beyond this life. Uh, they would be content to be an evolutionist. Right. Okay? Yes, sir. Uh, they are probably the equivalent of a modern day uh, lodge because uh, the benefit of joining them was for economic or business advancement, uh, that type of thing, influence. If you wanted to get into politics, if you wanted to rise in certain areas. And a very wealthy group of, of, of people. And so they're going to ask the Lord about the resurrection when they, they don't believe in the resurrection. And they give this account of a woman who's had the misfortune, I would have to say. Now, I, I don't want to discourage anyone, but, uh, you know, very twice, if they love each other, it's a blessing. I don't know. Anyone who survived seven husbands. Uh, but um, if, if she wanted to get married on the eighth time, I would say she was one tremendous woman. Okay. <laughs> Have to be. All right. And so uh, eventually she died. We all do. Okay. And they asked this question. Therefore, in the resurrection, verse 28, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all have her to wife. And Jesus answered and said, Ye do err, not knowing the scripture, nor the power of God. I'm going to tell you that the power of God here is a reference to the Spirit of God. And of course, the scripture is the word of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Now here's where, when he said, ye do err, not knowing the scripture. Verse 31. 
But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read? Have ye not read? Now, one of the problems I think, I know I had before I got saved, I didn't read the Bible. I didn't read the Bible. I had some classes that I was taking as a academy student at Bob Jones, and we were required to do homework and reading assignments and some memory verses. I did those things. But unless I was expected to do something, I this, this just sat there. And I, I didn't read the Bible. Now, after I received Christ as my Savior, I understood He died for me, forgave me of my sin. I read the Bible, started reading the Bible all the time. Then what's the difference? Well, I wanted to learn something about the Word of God. And, and anyone who's listening to me right now, if, if you can't find a church in America, in your neighborhood, believes this King James Bible and preaches what it says, read it. Amen. Read it. If, if you can't get out of your house because of COVID, fine, sit down at the kitchen table, read the Word of God. Just open it up and read it. But anyway, uh, they did err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. They would have found those things if they just read the Bible. Look at verse 31. Uh, here's what it said. Have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God? Now this is a side commentary. I have a Bible in my hand. Some people want to tell me that I can't know if it is or if it isn't and all the rest of this stuff. Yeah. Because only the original and the let them go worry about all that. Okay? Right. Yes, sir. My spirit bears witness with the Lord's spirit. I heard about my salvation here. Right. I heard about my sin problem here. Right. I received Christ on these grounds here. I've been fed since I'm 17, and I am 70 plus now. I, amen. Amen. And the Lord Jesus just said about the Old Testament. God said. Man. And we still have it. Yes, sir. I mean, he still had it in his day. Mm -hmm. And God sent it way back in Moses' day. Said. Now, if that's so, I'm not losing sleep tonight mm -hmm. over what God said. If he can keep what he told Moses right. to the day Jesus is talking to these <laughs> Sadducees, he can keep what Jesus told the apostles <laughs> to the day we're sitting here. Right. At Temple Baptist Church. Okay? I mean, we are dealing with God. Amen. Preservation. Have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob? Now, that comes from the Lord talking to Moses. And here's what I want to do I want to go back real quick. And we'll review a couple of verses. Because we're dealing here with the burning bush, Exodus chapter 3, verse 6. Moreover, he said to Moses, this is God speaking from the burning bush, I am the God of my father Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He's going to send Moses to Eve to lead his children out of captivity. Moses is going to be the type of the deliverer that would come, which is the son of God, the seed of the woman, pictured in the son of Abraham and Sarah, and so on in Scripture. Uh, prior to this, God told Isaac in Genesis 26, verse 24, the Lord appeared unto Isaac the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. Now, if you've heard those words and you know anything about your New Testament, they sound similar. The reason I say that is that uh, Galatians 3 tells us that the God of Abraham my God, Amen. by faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. That we're all the children of God through faith in Christ, and because of the way God has worked things, I'm a child of Abraham by faith. I believe 
keep saying promise of God. And you know what the Lord told us? He would never leave us nor forsake us. He has blessed us. Amen. And he will bless us. So what do you mean, preacher? He did something he didn't do for Abraham. He did something he didn't do for any of the Old Testament characters. He put his spirit inside of you. Right. He had to make you a new creature to do that. You are a split personality, so to speak. Yes, sir. You have a new man, born of God, born of the Spirit of God, that cannot sin, that lives inside of you, that has total access to the Father. And it will walk in the Spirit of which we're born. The Spirit of Christ <coughs> will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. That's different from the Old Testament. And yet many, many of the promises ring similar because we have the same Savior. Yes, sir. Notice in Genesis 28, it's God now talking to Jacob. Pastor made mention of this in the Sunday school lesson. But Jacob has seen the ladder. And in verse 13, verse 13, 14, Behold, the Lord stood above it, the ladder, and said, Jacob, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. Well, he, why is he saying that? When he told Isaac that, Abraham had died. Isaac's trying to build wells. Every time he, every, digging the old wells, every time he dig a well, the enemy would come and press him away. He'd dig another well, he'd dig another. He finally got to a well of peace. That's just in tight now. I'm going to make this application. When you bow your heart to Jesus Christ and receive him as your Savior, what he did at Calvary, you receive the blessing of God. Amen. Blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven.
So God's the God of the living. Right. He's our God. He's your God. He's my God. And He wants us to recognize Him as God. He is the God. God 
scriptures are the call of Abel righteous, our Lord. And that's one for you. His love says that Abel was righteous, and he identifies it as the first slain. There's a witness God gives. Take away the 
See, Abel needed that same thing, but he brought the right sacrifice. Right? healed now, not by Christ, certainly by God. Outside the camp. For those who serve whether that's Levi, the Old Testament types, or the Temple of Jerusalem during the day of Christ, controlled by the priest who were crucified, for reference to this physical body. No thought for God and no time for God. Those who tend to tabernacle have no right to worship at this altar. But if you put the faith in Christ, you have the right. Amen. Because we're to go to Him without the gain, without the pain. And offer the sacrifice of the faith. Praise of our lives. <coughs> you wish to someone one of the amazing things about the gospel of Christ is you can't buy it. And you can't earn it. And you 
and you can't sell it. And you can't accumulate enough to treat them. But if you humble your heart and you bow, Amen. you can have it. And when you bow, something happens. There's a spirit inside. that continual prayer. He said, sin lies at the door. There's a sacrifice. There's a lamb. And Christ is the door. God and God sat in the tabernacle and what is it, Leviticus 17? What's that? That's the flip side of the coin. 